Are you guys familiar with how Polaroid pictures work? So we have the Polaroid picture and we have a little pouch. This pouch is filled with the developing chemical and whenever I so it's it's so simple in here. So you have the camera and this is just a hollow space in here with a camera and a mirror right here. I'm sorry, a lens and a mirror. It, it, it's, it's entirely, it, all of it's a camera. So you have the lens that focuses the light onto the undeveloped image, which is like right here. And that's also why inside of the cartridge of the film, there is a spring, a spring loader mechanism. So whenever one piece of film gets moved, it moves the other one up. So a little spring behind them. So you can have a stack and pull from it and it moves up and pull from it and it moves up. So each each one ends up being at the same distance from the lens because it's just sitting there exposed on. And then it gets pushed through, which I believe, yeah, there's like little marks where like little rubber wheels pull on this part. I think that's how that works. But either way, there's a little pouch of developing fluid and the the little rollers squeeze that, pop the little seal right here, and that goes up. On here, it actually, there's actually some like, I mean, this feels like there's like powder in there, and obviously there was no fluid to go up. So I'm thinking what happens is over like 20 years, because this film's like 20 years old, from the 1990s, and I just used it today. Over 20 years, somehow that developing chemical maybe reacts with itself, just like that, and it just doesn't have any fluid to develop because there's not enough liquid to spread through the entire picture. So even with some of the other ones like that, you can notice that there's still not enough liquid to go all the way to the edges. So let's go back to the beginning. Oh wait, no. Let's, let's talk about like the actual like how did I get this film? So I picked this film up back in 2013, and I actually got it with a camera, a Polaroid Spectre camera. And honestly, I was really happy with it so much that it came with two packs of film. Sorry, one pack of film and one was in here, so I had like six pictures in here, four pictures or something like that, and so. I liked using it so much because like, oh my god, it's been like five years since we've had a Polaroid camera. And now it's been like so much longer since we've had a Polaroid camera. And so I saved one of the packs for someday in the future. I totally forgot about it. We just found it in the freezer. So I was like, you know what? It's time to use that film. So today I opened up the pack and put it in there and been having fun taking pictures with it. Have four more pictures. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take pictures of my projects. So I'll just, I'll always have film in that Spectre camera. I like Spectre instead of the older Polaroid because it's, it's a wider image, whereas normal Polaroid kind of cuts off to that or so. Because I think this is like the four by three aspect ratio of like TVs and well, old TVs, my TVs and stuff like that. Now it's 16 by nine or whatever, but oh well. But, yeah, so I'm just going to take pictures of anything that I that I make that will be interesting. And I can just have, have like a, a Polaroid collection of things that I make. That would be kind of cool. Or at least the interesting things that I make. Kind of like my electric lawn tractor I was working on today. But let's go back to the beginning. So, today I started and I made that. That's just a view of behind my shed. My little junk pile and my little paved brick area and whatnot. Oh, my ladder. My beautiful ladder. So then I took a picture of my lawn tractor. I built a trailer hitch for it yesterday and it seems to be okay. Unfortunately, I tried to move about a ton and a half of bricks. I mean, more like just one ton of bricks, but um, I had I couldn't lift up the trailer on my own because there's so many bricks on the trailer. I had to use like an eight foot lever to lift up the front of the of the trailer and pop it onto the the hitch that I made. Well, the hitch is fine, 
there was and the trailer was so heavy that it it, it popped the, tra the the lawn tractor up like that so and and so much so that I couldn't even push the front down with my own weight it's like that's like 120 130 pounds pushing down on the front of the lawn tractor so I ended up having to move a bunch of bricks off of the off of the trailer but Okay, so I usually run my lawn tractor at 48 volts. I didn't have enough power. I kept fighting with it. And there was a bunch of, like a whole, there's a whole long video about that on my other channel. I had to use it at 72 volts. And then, then it finally was able to push the, the, um, the trailer back. But when I pushed the trailer back, it was so bumpy that it actually snapped the ball off at the end. Because... I forgot to weld it on the inside. So I welded it on the outside, kind of just tack welded it. And then I forgot to weld it anymore. And so it kind of popped off. But hey, at least that means that it'll be easy to weld back on. So I'm not too concerned. But now I have the... the and now I have to get my welder out again and fix that. But oh well. The trailer is in the right place now. Because it, it snapped right at the end. Then... Me and my mom had some fun taking pictures in more darkness. Like, this is kind of like... Eh, the sun was already down for a little bit, so I was kind of surprised it actually got any any images at all. And unfortunately, at that low of a light, it keeps the shutter open for so long that holding the camera, all that shaking that your hands naturally do, it gets... It, it blurs the image, so I should have put it on a tripod. And then I tried... Well, I had my mom take a picture of me, and it did not work at all. <laughs> so, like you can see, there's my shoulder. So then we tried again. Still didn't work. But we have, like, a little bit of my face, so it's kind of interesting. Unfortunately, this is even darker, and so it leaves the shutter open even longer, and so there's just... It's so blurry. But then I decide, okay, let's just try a flash. I don't like how flashes look, but I think it actually looked okay. So I'm happy with this picture. And it's, it's kind of interesting how there's like that, like, it looks like there's only like certain colors that were in the middle or something like that. And this stuff is like really poorly processed, but this is processed a little bit better. It's kind of kind of interesting. I kind of like it. I'm probably going to go onto eBay and buy just a crap load of expired Polaroid Spectra film because it's always kind of interesting to see how it comes out. Especially because I believe how you store it can affect how it looks. Like I think I've seen some pictures that it's like they're all skewed towards purple or they're all like reddish or something like that. Whereas these ones were all like I guess perhaps due to the temperature and perhaps due to like when they were made this batch of film they're all kind of like yellowish but yeah so I'm probably going to go see about ordering a bunch of expired film off eBay not a bunch maybe like four or five packages and four or five cartridges <clears throat> or I might see about treating myself to some impossible project film so the impossible project which is a, a an organization, a company that bought the Polaroid film develop, uh, production machines after the last one went out of business. And so they actually make new Polaroid film. And one of the things they make is, well, so they make color, they make black and white, and they make black and red. I might see if I'm getting myself some black and red Polaroid film because that sounds pretty amazing. Black and red Polaroid film. I think it even has like a black uh, like outer layer. You can also get color with a black like bezel or, or whatever. It's like that's that's pretty cool. I don't, I don't remember seeing that any other time. Oh man, I just had a sudden flashback. So back in 1999 or so, I got... A 35 millimeter camera, which is a Pikachu camera, <clears throat> a Pikachu camera, and so whatever you took a picture of, there was a Pokemon outline on the outside of like Pokeballs and whatever, and it was just it was so cool. My 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 throat's been kind of full of junk all day, 
I think it's because it's springtime, just like all the trees are releasing junk into the air or whatever. I don't know. Oh, well. Well, that's pretty much it. I don't think I'm going to get a load of bricks this weekend because I've spent too much time trying to, trying to make that trailer hitch so I can move the trailer back. Oh, well. Well, that's pretty much it. Just been playing around with old Polaroids and having a lot of fun because it's, it's really cool. There's something special about physical pictures. Because, like, maybe it's just because I work, with I work with digital photography and video every fucking day. And to go back to 16mm or to go back to Polaroid or any of those actual physical formats it, it's it's similar but it's so much more special it seems i like i love it well, that's pretty much it i hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching see ya